Hi. So I guess I wanted to talk a little bit about how things have changed. So the world looks pretty different to how it used to look. And uh, so one example is that right now I have a device which I can click a button and get food or packages or uh, a taxi basically delivered to me almost instantly. So we have a uh, much more on-demand world, let's say. Uh, people like me, millennials, have definitely been part of that. We've got used to things arriving very quickly. We also travel a lot more. So we have a world which means with just your phone, you can hop on a plane and explore cultures you've never been to. Even if you don't speak the language, you've got a device that can translate for you. You've got a device with maps on it that will help you find your way around. And more and more, as we've heard today, we're using voice. So more and more, this is a world in which we talk to our machines. We don't just type, we don't like to speak to our machines. And so we're looking at a future where actually this human-machine interaction, that's a, th a sentence we hear a lot, human-machine interaction. And the interesting thing is when you've got very old-fashioned systems that were designed a long time before we were thinking about human and machine interaction, and we're trying to use them with machines. And what we see is that sometimes things break. So they don't work quite as well as we would expect. And addresses, like street addresses, is actually a really good example of this. So street addresses were designed a few hundred years ago. They were designed so that you could deliver mail. And they actually did a pretty good job at delivering mail. The problem is, now what we use them for is we type them, and increasingly speak them, into machines. Now, an address like this, Acadia and Acacia, there's one difference, a C and a D. Very easy for you to make a small typo when you're typing on your screen, in your car, on your phone, and end up the wrong side of the city, because we trust our machines. We basically type something into a sat-nav and then follow the directions. We don't get out a big map anymore and look for context. We go, that's where I want to go, and we trust our machine to take us there. And the problem is, humans make mistakes. That's what we do. We're human. And machines aren't always very good at spotting those mistakes. So that's one frustration. Another frustration is that addresses were designed for mail delivery. They weren't designed to get you to a specific entrance. So this example here, if I look up Harrods in London, I get a pin in the middle of the building. Now, that's useful to tell me that is where Harrods is in general. If I want to know which entrance I should be going to, if I'm delivering something to Harrods, I probably shouldn't be using the same entrances as celebrities. And that's frustrating, because there's one address and multiple entrances. So addresses actually aren't all that accurate. And in a world before, when addresses were used to deliver mail, and probably the postman or the postwoman knew where you lived, that's not the world we're in anymore. We're using devices, and this just isn't quite good enough. And I'm a, an Airbnb fan, I've used it a lot, and I've basically discovered the more beautiful the Airbnb is, the more likely you are to get lost trying to find it. Because if nobody's tried to deliver mail there, it doesn't have an address. If you're staying in a gorgeous little shepherd's hut halfway up a mountain, no address. You're going to get a very long paragraph of description, sometimes written by someone where you don't share a common language, trying to explain. I actually drove for a very long time looking for a treehouse in Portugal because it said something like, drive for five kilometers outside the town and you'll see a small wooden sign on the motorway. And there was a very small, it was about this big, and we think we drove past it four or five times before we found it. So that's frustrating. And then we talk about voice. We've heard a lot about voice today with Alexa. And I'm a total voice addict. I'm that person who dictates emails if I'm sitting in the back of a car. I have an, a Google Home and an Alexa. I use Alexa all the time. But voice and addresses are actually a really pretty poor uh, mix. Now, um, we'd heard a lot about what Alexa's doing earlier, and Alexa is amazing. The problem is using voice. It, voice works really well when you've got really small data sets when you've just got a really small list of options. One of the problems with voice is trying to teach it to understand everything humans could possibly say. It's a lot of things. We say a lot of things. And I like this. Uh, if you just look up things like this online, Alexa fail, Google Home fail, things like this. Looking at my shopping list, like what? Loose leaf, loose leaf, ham, berry, teeth. Now, I'm a human. I have some context here. I understand this person's shopping. Loose leaf could be tea, cranberry tea, right? That's something I can do as a human. That's a very hard thing to teach a machine to do when it's trying to understand what you meant when it didn't hear you perfectly. Now, addresses are so complicated for this. Addresses, there are millions and millions and millions of addresses. Uh, all over the world, you're thinking about different street names. Sometimes you've got the same street name in a city. So in London, we've got lots of roads called Church Road. So how does your voice device, whatever that is, a smartwatch and Alexa in your car, understand what you meant? Now, this is a great example here in, in the UK, if you've got an accent like a lot of us in this room. Lawn Road and Lawn Road. Spelt differently, said exactly the same. If you say, Alexa, order me an Uber to 97 Lawn Road, 
How does it know? That's not Alexa's fault. That's not the voice recognition's fault. That's actually the fault of the address. This is not an address system that was designed around voice. Uh, if you go to the US, you'll find they also do very exciting things like this. 241st Street. 241st Street. Very difficult to explain which of those you meant. Uh, if you're from the UK, maybe you know that you say this Worcestershire. If you're not from the UK, would you really guess that you'd said that word Worcestershire? So if you're programming a navigation device with voice, should you, should you teach it the correct pronunciation and every possible incorrect pronunciation in case someone's going to a wedding in Worcestershire and has never been there before? So it's really frustrating having to do this. So we basically decided, let's start again. Let's not use an addressing system that was designed a few hundred years ago with devices. Let's start now. And let's do something which is universal, covers the whole world, which is accurate, so I can specify a door, and built for voice. So universal, accurate, built for voice. Now, there is a universal, accurate addressing system, GPS coordinates. Now, this is, covers the world. I can specify an entrance, a spot on the beach for yoga. The problem is, if you say to me, hi, Claire, come to my party at 25 degrees, 9 minutes, 40.918, etc., I'm probably not going to come. So what we wanted to do is take the power of this and make it work for human beings. So we divided the entire globe into a grid. So this is a grid of 57 trillion squares, and every single square has been labeled with an address made of three words from the dictionary. So every single square, three meters by three meters, probably from about here to where that table is, has been labeled with an address made of three dictionary words. I can say to you, meet me at Apple Banana Spoon, and that is a totally unique address. Our office in London is at Filled Count Soap. I used to live at Purple Vouch Panel. Everywhere in the world has an address made of these three words. Now, the entrance here uh, is actually Dining Moving Change. So that's one of the entrances just to this building just here. Now, we haven't just done this in English. So every square in the world, on the land of mass of the world, has an address in so far 37 different languages. If you go next year to the Olympics in Tokyo, you can use three-word addresses in English. If somebody from Japan came here, they could use three-word addresses in Japanese. So everywhere in the world has an address, and you can use it in your own language. Now, this is increasingly being, being built into navigation systems. So we talked about voice. If you buy a Mercedes and a few other cars on the market, you can get in the car, you can give it a three-word address with your voice, and none of this going back and typing in and ending up getting your phone out and actually just giving up with that voice recognition in your car. You've actually just say three words and go exactly where you'd like to go. So for example... Hey, Mercedes. How may I help you? What three words? Glass, keys... And that is it. Glass keys, rooftop, takes me exactly where I wanted to go. It's unique in the world. Same if you drive a Ford car, you can use this in some of your Ford cars. It's also being built into ride hailing apps and things like that. Everyone knows how frustrating it is when their taxi comes to the wrong place or goes to the wrong place. So this future we're thinking of is where, just like a normal address, you can give someone a three-word address. When you invite someone to a wedding, you can say the parking space is at pictured buttercup dragonfly, and that will make sense to them. When you get an Airbnb, they can send you a three-word address so you don't get lost. When you're putting something on Instagram, you can say the three-word address of where that coffee was that you found. But this is our team in London, and we're not just motivated by that. Wonderful as it is that nobody's pizza is going to be late and cold, or your Uber's not going to take you to the wrong place, there's something a bit bigger here, which is this. So if you look at this map, there's actually not that much going on. This is in Durban in South Africa. Now you can see Kennedy Road there, not very much else. If you look on satellite, this is what exists there. So lots of people who live there in this informal settlement. And they don't even have street names, let alone addresses. And that's not just in a case if you don't have a very good map. In this case, you've got a wonderful map. Google have taken a picture and they've drawn the roads. Great, roads are there. Only one road in that picture has an address. You can't get a road from a, a street address from a satellite image. Now, if I live on one of these streets and say I wanted to call an ambulance, how would I explain where I live? Say I want to register to vote. Do I have an address that I can use to register to vote? Actually, globally, there are about 4 billion people who live without an address. This is something we take for granted. OK, it might be annoying for me that my package is late because they went around the wrong side of the building. But if I have to call an ambulance, I know I can tell them where I am. If I have to register at the doctor, I can tell them I have an address. I can use that address when I vote, things like that. So this is something we take for granted. And what's been amazing is seeing NGOs using our tech. So this app that we have 
It's free and you can download it and use it anywhere in the world. So NGOs are using it. So this is a project actually in South Africa, in Durban, where they've been visiting homes and saying, this is your three-word address. So anyone with a smartphone can discover this address. They never change. So you visit someone, you can say, this is your three-word address, write it down, put it on a sign. And then if they need to call, in this case, this was actually about maternal health. If they need to call the midwife, they can say exactly where they are and know that they will get found. This is really, really important. One of the reasons this project happened was because the doctor actually emailed us through our website. I remember this so clearly. I remember the first phone call with him. And he said, said, women are dying and babies are dying because I cannot reach them. People phone for a paramedic or for an ambulance or for a doctor and they say, where do you live? And they say, I live in the township. Do you know the place with the red roof and then you go left and then there's a tree? That's crazy. This is crazy that people are dying because we cannot find them. So one of the really amazing things has been seeing projects like this around the world where people are able to use these three word addresses to find people in need, to deliver goods and services that people really, really, really need. And actually in Mongolia, so Mongolia became the first country a few years ago to officially recognize three word addresses. And um, this started with the mail delivery. But if you buy a Lonely Planet guide to go to Mongolia, you should. It's a gorgeous country. Uh, if you go there, you'll see a three word address on every page of that Lonely Planet guide for every listing. And one of the fascinating projects that I love is a project actually with Airbnb there. So Mongolia is one of the last countries in the world with a properly nomadic population. So they've got a lot of no uh, nomadic population in Mongolia. But one of the frustrating things is that with climate change natural and natural disasters and things like that, things are getting worse. And it's very hard if you're living a nomadic lifestyle to maintain that lifestyle. But your whole, a whole lot of culture has been built around that. And one of the really fascinating things is there's a nomadic tribe here in the Tiger Forest in Mongolia, and they are using Airbnb to help maintain their livelihoods. But this is a nomadic <laughs> livelihood. So how do you explain where an Airbnb is if it's moving? So now what they do is they send the three-word address to their guests. So when they say they're moving every couple of weeks, they send a new three-word address so their guests can come and find them and have an incredible experience living with this family in the tiger forest. So this is a, a reindeer tribe. So they work, they live with the reindeer and they uh, migrate around the country. So they're using what three words with Airbnb. And sometimes it's a little closer to home. So a few weeks ago, the BBC wrote this article um, because because increasingly we're seeing emergency services here in the UK using three word addresses because the last thing you want to be doing, if you've been in an accident and you are somewhere that you don't know, the last thing you want to be doing when you're very stressed is trying to explain, I'm half somewhere on the M25, I don't know, there was a service station. So what we're seeing increasingly, which is absolutely amazing, is people, uh, somebody tweeting something like this, so a friend was involved in a serious motorcycle accident, those with him were struggling to describe to the operator where they were until somebody stopped who had the What Three Words app. And this was enthusiastically received by Norfolk Police. So Norfolk Police have been real innovators in this, getting people set up. Um, somebody else tweeting the other day, I just used what three words for the first time on a live call for East England Ambulance. The patient was in the middle of the field, but the app worked a treat. So this has been a really amazing thing. And actually, I've just got a little recording of a 999 call, so you can hear this in action. I think this was from a couple of weeks ago. So whether you're calling for a midwife in, a, in an informal settlement in Durban or telling someone about a fire, you can use three-word addresses for much more than just making sure you're not going to get lost. Um, and one of the things we love is seeing them pop up all over the world. So you guys now know, if you see an address like this, you'll know what it means. This is actually an art gallery, and it's both the name and the address of the art gallery, so they named it after their location. This is a, uh, the HQ of Deutsche Bahn in, in Berlin. So Deutsche Bahn's HQ has the three-word address on its window. No context. If you don't know what, what three words is, you don't know what that means. You guys know. 
And this is a bus stop in Ulaanbaatar. So bus stops, even bus stops in Ulaanbaatar in Mongolia. And that's the three word address you can see at the top in Mongolian and underneath in English. So our bold prediction is that when you guys get wedding invitations and they say banana, buttercup, dragonfly, you will understand what that means. And more importantly, that there will be nobody who is hurt, who cannot get services, who cannot get goods because they cannot be found. <laughs>